Welcome to the Roots Revival with Food Prude, where we're going back to our roots and learning old-fashioned ways in a modern world. Hi, I'm Laura Lawrence, and I'm glad you're here with me. All right, let's talk about some sourdough lessons that I've learned along the way. I've been doing it for a couple years now, and it's um, it's absolutely one of my favorite things to make because I just feel like I'm creating like an art form with bread all the time. I'm just kind of coming up with things or substituting things, and I'm just really learning how to just feel with the dough, trust myself, and then I'll get some kind of cool thing that the family can eat the next day. Um, and if I don't, and if I fail, you make breadcrumbs out of it. So tip number one, doesn't work out, it's too dry, it didn't rise, it just tastes like, go ahead and turn it into breadcrumbs. Or another thing you can do is literally just rip it apart, put it on the bottom of a casserole pan, and then you put your some veggies, you scramble some eggs, Put it in the oven and you know top some cheese on it of course and then bake that so you get yourself a, uh, like the bottom base to some kind of casserole or you make breadcrumbs with it which is great so so uh, i love sourdough but here's the thing about me and sourdough i love sourdough for everyday things i am not a stretch and fold kind of girl i don't really care about the crumb size kind of girl i just need it to taste good and i want it to be for literally everyday items I don't need a fancy loaf. Whenever I make one of those, we end up kind of not eating um, most of it or I'm not sure what to do with it. I, I don't know, it's just, you know, you want warm butter or something and you gotta wait for it to cool down for five hours and then you can finally have it. And then what do you do with it? It probably makes gr good grilled cheese. But other than that, I, most of it goes to breadcrumbs, to be honest. So I like everyday stuff for sourdough, like muffins and pancakes and bread that I can turn into grilled cheese or toast for the breakfast and stuff like that. So um, pizza dough, oh my gosh, nan bread that you could just put cheese and chicken on, you got yourself a meal, um, honey butter rolls, you know, just things like that that just fit into everyday life. So that's why my sourdough thing is called sourdough for every day. Every day sourdough, every day. So let's talk about some of the sourdough stuff. Now, I have been coming up with a recipe to make um, tortillas. And there's a lot of different recipes out there for tortillas, right? A lot of them um, are discard tortillas and stuff like that. This is just whatever I have. Either I use discard or I go ahead and use some kind of star starter that I have on the counter at whatever level it wants to be at. Could be flat, could be starving, or could be super active. It doesn't really matter. I just look at the, I go. I end up going with the feel of um, the, the dough. But this is made, and you can see that it looks a little brown. These are made up with um, probably at least most um, red hard wheat berries that, that we grind here. I love them. The red hard wheat berries have just added such a nice flavor to, um, instead of being like a traditional wheat flavor, I don't know, something about them really top notch. We all really like it. So these were actually made yesterday. And my secret ingredient, that's not gonna be a secret, right? I'm gonna publish the recipe. It's lard and it just makes it more soft and pliable. And these were actually made yesterday. And you can see, I can still, and look at that was even a burnt one. This is Skiska, you get one that's not burnt. Ah, like this one, look at that. This is yesterday's. I made these last night for dinner for tacos and they are still gonna be foldable for today, right? That's lovely. So you fry them up with a the cast iron. Then what I like to do is immediately put them in your, um, in your dish towel like this. And then, and then serve them just like this. It keeps the moisture and stuff like that. And then I just went ahead and I placed them in the Ziploc bag for overnight so that we could use them again today. So that is that is my tip and trick on any any tortillas and stuff like that. Um, my other thing that we uh, I've noticed a lot about sourdough is that for me, sourdough has a big component of the health reasons, right? It helps with the glycemic index. It helps break down the gluten so that I can handle it better and have more bread things in my life. I'm a bread life, you know? So that's the biggest thing that I see is people are missing the mark on that. So you get a discard recipe. Woohoo, we gotta get rid of the discard, right? So you throw in a half a cup or a cup of discard. You add a couple cups of flour and then you go and make something and then you bake it right away. That's completely missing the mark in my opinion. Don't get mad at me, but in my opinion, it's completely missing the mark. The point of the sourdough is to break down that flour so that two cups of flour you just add and then you made something is giving you nothing of the health benefits at all because it did not have time to break it down. So you've got to make sure that you find recipes that are overnight or substitute them and make them overnight. I, that's what I've done with a lot of the recipes where I have um, seen the recipes out there. I've adjusted it to where um, certain ingredients will just go in the next morning, but the majority will go in with the flour and all, you know, and the sourdough 
So it breaks it down overnight and then I go ahead and you know, finish it up the next morning and then give it a bake. That way I've got that fermented time in there. And then that's the reason why I'm going over after the sourdough stuff is um, the, the health benefits of it. So that's my other tip. Um, my, and then another one is you gotta really learn to trust yourself. These sourdough starters are gonna behave differently um, because of temperature, humidity, uh, what kind of environment that you're in. So mine's gonna look different and perhaps even act different than yours is out there, but that's okay. That's the fun part of it. All you have to do is understand the concept of, of it and the, the using it for the health reasons and stuff like that. What it's doing is grabbing the wild yeast and bacteria in the air and in the flour itself and then bubbling and growing like that. And that's what we can do in replacement of buying the little packs or the little jars of a manufactured yeast that um, is manufactured and we're trying to stay away from all that kind of stuff, right? More stuff that just comes naturally instead of something that is manufactured. So we gotta stay away from that. So a lot of my recipes, um, you know, it'll say like, oh, it's gotta be active or it should be discard or it should be at this stage or this hydration level. Honestly, mine's at probably a 50% hydration level if you need to get down to the nitty gritty with it. And all my recipes or anything that I bake with, I kind of just grab whatever I have. So did I feed my starter six hours ago, 12 hours ago, 24 hours ago? Any of that time works for me and then I go ahead and make it. This bread that I have right here, this is the sandwich loaf. It needs to go into the oven. As you can tell, it is fully proofed and ready to rock and roll. So I've got to get that in the oven before it deflates on me. But that was made with 24 hour ago fed starter. So it had the hooch on it. It was like, ah, oh, I'm starving, feed me lady. I threw out the hooch and then I just used a cup of a very flat starter in there, mixed in the ingredients and then let this sit for all day. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bake it for really in a little bit, really soon after I get off this video, as you can tell, it's about to get bing. All right, let's talk about the sourdough starter itself and learning to trust yourself and like the feel of certain recipes and stuff like that. So I want you to think about um, when you're whipping up some dough when you've made muffins before, usually that dough, it's not even really a dough, it's really just like a mix, right? And you use an ice cream scooper and you fill out your tins and you go ahead and bake it. That is a pretty watery dough, right? When you're making like a, a bread, an actual bread, that's a, more of a stiff dough, like a pizza or these tortillas, that's a stiff dough. Where you're using the dough hook, if you're using the dough hook like me, that's what I do, it's lazy. I love it, it's great, it works fantastic. Um, I use that dough hook and it's coming off the sides of the actual bowl, right? When it's when it finally gets mixed, it's you doing it. So that is called a stiff dough, right? And then there's like that medium sized dough, medium size, medium dough, where you, you have your butter rolls or something like that, where you open them up and it's sort of, there's that, it's just so soft, like a pillow, like you just want to take a nap with it. I mean, I wouldn't blame you if you did or even judge you, go for it. Don't forget the butter. But um, so that's more of a medium dough. So it's kind of different kinds of doughs that you're gonna um, be working with, but kind of think about that when you're new, doing a new recipe or if you're thinking a recipe is working or not working. Think about, should this be stiff? Or is it gonna be too dry in the morning? Or is it you know too watery and it's just gonna, you know I'm not gonna be able to roll it out or pat it out to make pizza dough? Well, then you need to make it a little more stiff for, for when you guys go, to, go ahead and bake it. So learn to trust yourself. Um, and a couple other tips would be about when you're mixing up and you're like, should I add more water? Should I add more flour? What should I do? Are, what kind of flour are you using? Are you using fresh ground berries? If you are, you need to let them soak in the liquid. I kind of like put all my ingredients in there. I run the dough hook or whatever for, you know, for like a minute or two just to kind of get all of it incorporated. And then I let it sit for five, 10 minutes. You know, you can let it sit longer if you want, no, no big deal. Come back, then go ahead and start whipping it again and seeing how that is feeling because it needed that time to, for those, for all the new grains that just got crushed up to go ahead and start um, absorbing some of that liquid. Then you can really judge like, is it way too dry where it's still spitting flour in my face or do I need to add a tablespoon? And only add a tablespoon of this or a tablespoon of that at a time or you'll get kind of crazy and going out of control and then, you know, then who knows what you got in the end. So just kind of learn to trust yourself and see what the dough should be like and then it's gonna turn out. If it doesn't, again, go ahead and turn it into a casserole 
or some breadcrumbs, right? So I hope these tips and tricks um, and a little bit of recap from me on the sourdough kind of gives you some inspiration and knowing that you can do it. And if you mess up, that's okay. I do all the time coming up with recipes and it becomes something else. It's a fun science experiment and that's what life's about, right? Things aren't perfect. That's sometimes how it goes. So go forth, bake, and eat, my friends.